Hi everybody, we're going to do on shape and learn on shape, but before we do that, I want to introduce you some ideas that I think are important when it comes to learning because I'm cursed with the heretical view that learning should be fun. It should be something you enjoy, it should be something where you get successes along the way as you learn that encourages you to learn more and more. I don't think learning is about picking up a big stick and beating the ideas into your head until you've got them. Consequently, I think it's important to take it a step at a time in a certain way so you can achieve those objectives and basically enjoy yourself. Now it's not that difficult, just think about it when you learnt as a child. How did you learn? Me, I learnt engineering by playing with Play-Doh. I played with Play-Doh, I played with clay, I played with Legos, I played with Meccano, and at the end of the day I ended up playing with metal and wood and making stuff. And that, I think, is a good progression for everybody because we have to learn everything. We have to learn not to pee ourselves, we have to learn to walk, we have to learn to eat, we have to learn to tie our shoes, and all of these skills which we don't think of of skills are brought to bear in anything you want to learn. Because as somebody who wants to learn 3D CAD and wants to make stuff, the most important thing you have to learn is how to see in three dimensions. Because you think you can already because you move through a real world, but to be honest, seeing things in three dimensions when you're moving through them and seeing them in three dimensions when you want to build them, they're two different things. And if you're planning on learning CAD, what you're planning on doing is seeing in three dimensions in the CAD workspace. And the CAD workspace is not the real world. The CAD workspace is that intermediate point between your head and the real world. And you have to translate your head into an object in the workspace and then create that object out in the real world. And that is a difficult skill unless you've practiced it before. And oddly enough, you don't practice that by being in the workspace, you practice that by playing with Play-Doh and Legos and Meccano. If you do that, you'll learn to handle things. You'll learn to feel and see the shape. And it doesn't then matter if it's in front of you on the school desk or in the workspace. If you haven't done that, then you need to be able to learn that. And one really good way of learning that is with simpler programs that will teach you that kind of aspect. It's why I keep rattling on about Tinkercad. Tinkercad will teach you about how to handle objects in the workspace and put them together to create a 3D object. It's a very forgiving area in which to do that and we're going to use that Tinkercad experience when we shift to Onshape because by the time you've got to Onshape then you should have a feeling for what the 3D workspace is like and what the objects are like that you can move around. What Tinkercad does is it creates the objects for you in what's called primitives. Now, primitives are primitive shapes, spheres, cubes, that sort of stuff are all created in Tinkercad ready for you. You click them, drag them into the workspace, move them around, rearrange them and create an object. Now, in a 3D modelling project like uh, Onshape, you have to create that primitive. Now, that can be a little bit daunting at first, but it does give you a lot more control over what the primitive is going to look like and what the primitive is going to do. Now, you don't have to have fun while you're learning a 3D CAD program. You can just sit in a library and beat yourself with a stick. It's totally up to you. I just happen to think it's better. Now, if you're new to 3D CAD software, I strongly suggest you go to a much simpler version like Tinkercad and play with that for a couple of months or so till you get that sense of what a workspace in a computer is like and you get that sense of what you can do with a primitive. Having done that, of course, you then will want to move on to a parametric program. Now, a parametric mechanical engineering CAD program is called that because the primitive is defined by parameters. 
And of course, if you want to define a cube, then you define it by its length, its width, and the height. Those three parameters are what define a primitive for you. And in something like Onshape, you have to define the parameters of your primitive, and that's the first step you'll take. The next thing you need to do is to add features to that primitive. Although we're looking at Onshape to do this, it's only an example. Actually, all of these programs all do the same thing because they must do. There's just little sort of intricacies about how they go about it. I don't waste my time looking at the intricacies. I waste my time looking at what's global to everything. Because in that way, when you have a global view and it un you understand a bit more about what it is you're actually trying to achieve, it stops you being a slave to any particular program. And the world of CAD is fast moving with Developments happening all the time and new programs that are better than the older programs coming up all the time. Take Shape of 3D, for example. So it's a fast moving world with lots of things happening in it, but the basics of it don't change. And they don't change because they have to do that job. And there's only a few ways to do that job. And when you have a bit more of a global view, you can understand that a bit better. Which is why I approach things this way. It pulls in all of your other experience. It means you don't have as much to learn. You only have a way of doing it to learn as opposed to why you're doing it to learn and that makes a big difference in the speed at which you learn and how quickly you can actually do something. It's often remarked how quickly I learn but I don't do it by sweating over the things for hours, I do it by being able to see what I'm trying to do, pull in all my other experiences, looking for what's common in something and then picking up a few of the intricacies. And it turns out it's not that difficult. Anyway, these, I think, are important ideas to share, to try to get hold of. The more nitty gritty of the intricacies of Onshape, yes, we're going to cover those, but I mean, a hundred people cover those. There's loads of video tutorials on how to do Onshape. I thought I would add something a bit more, of what I, well, what I think is a bit more valuable but yes we are going to go into a bit more of the intricacies. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. 